All right, welcome. Uh, welcome to second day session of our uh, UFT 11.5 training. And uh, we will be doing some interesting stuff today. So before we start, I um, just want to find out from you folks if you have any questions, anything you want me to go over, um, you know, anything you want me to particularly address. It need not be, uh, you know, uh, any technical stuff, uh, but anything related to the class or the way we have handled the course uh, or the session yesterday, anything pertaining to that, you know, just to make it um, better for all of us. Okay. Um, while you type, if you have any, uh, you know, concerns or if you have any feedback, um, you know, feel free to type or talk to me. Let me know. Well, today's. Uh, topic uh, is going to be, uh, we'll be introducing ourselves to the API testing, which happens to be, um, you know, one of the critical components of your UFT. Um, so we'll be looking into that. Um, we can, uh, we can, I mean, it, uh, uh, the question here is, uh, will we be covering uh, MVC application testing using QTP? Now, it really doesn't matter uh, as far as, uh, you know, the architecture of the application because, uh, it, it, you know, what you do behind the scenes, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, platform you use, what kind of technologies you use, you know, that uh, kind of like uh, is irrelevant to QTP or to, um, you know, the UFT software because uh, basically what it does is uh, uh, the GUI testing. So uh, what we need to see is uh, what part of uh, the GUI uh, was created uh, with something which uh, uh, UFT would or would not support. So behind the scenes, if you're using, uh, you know, MMC uh, or MVC rather, it, it really doesn't matter uh, because that's the architecture or that's the design of your application. So uh, we are much concerned about uh, the GUI portion of it. Um, so if uh, we have an uh, MVC app, uh, fine, uh, no problem, we can do that. Um, because uh, internally you could be using Link, uh, you could be using, uh, you know, your WCF classes uh, um, or whether you could, so it really doesn't matter. Um, so um, short answer is uh, yes, we can be covering. Now, would I be going into the architecture of the application? Uh, you know, uh, it, it all depends, um, you know, depending on how much time we have and where we stand. Um, I might take you into um, the design of an MVC app and then, you know, show you how it works and then uh, what part of it uh, we are going to be testing. So we'll be doing that. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let us uh, get going. Um, today's uh, topic is uh, going to be uh, your um, API testing. So, for the API testing, um, we got to have a, a certain background about, uh, you know, what kind of APIs we will be testing. So today, I'm going to be just introducing you to uh, the concept of uh, API testing. And then uh, eventually we'll be going and then we'll be doing uh, some good, uh, uh, you know, testing down the road uh, when we are uh, creating uh, uh, that framework. Okay, so what is your understanding of API? What is an API? Um, how do we go about testing it, right? Um, okay, today uh, the systems are, are uh, more uh, connected than ever. Um, so the way they are connected to, with one another is uh, using the uh, internet uh, technology, meaning that, uh, you know, if somebody is willing to share some information, uh, we are going to tap into it and then get that information. So how do they talk? The way they talk is uh, using XML. Uh, so the way the systems interact today is uh, using, uh, you know, web services. So there are different kinds of web services. Uh, there is something called a SOAP web service and then there is something called a REST web service. Now we have, uh, uh, for those of you folks who are uh, looking for an in-depth coverage of uh, such things, uh, then we have a course uh, called um, SOAP UI where we go and then do 16 hours of um, nothing but, uh, you know, constant, uh, you know, testing of uh, different types of web, uh, web services. Uh, 
So we have their, um, again, REST uh, services. We have their uh, SOAP UI services, uh, SOAP, uh, in fact, uh, SOAP messaging services. So we do cover, uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, uh, that stuff in that course. What I am going to do in this particular course is um, 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 give you some idea of uh, the web services and then uh, focus on from um, UFT point of view how we go about uh, doing those uh, the testing of that. Okay, so uh, a general idea of uh, what it is is uh, um, when you have multiple systems and they, they need to communicate. Uh, basically, the way they communicate, as I said, is through XML. So uh, there is a protocol that needs to be followed, and the protocol is uh, um, is as follows. Uh, let us see. What am I trying to do here? Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can uh, go over a few things with you. Uh, now, uh, the when you have uh, um, this environment of uh, a virtual machine, um, it, it tends to get a little uh, uh, slower. Um, so bear with me. Um, I have an eight gig machine, eight gig of RAM. Uh, but at times, I notice that even with the eight gigs, uh, it's kind of like uh, you know goes through some hiccups um, to. Um, you know, bring up uh, what you are looking for. So, um, I'm just waiting for uh, my drawing board uh, to come up, um, and uh, so that I could uh, basically talk about um, um, how these systems they communicate. So, while uh, it is coming up, uh, let me start talking about it. Um, so, you have, um, let's say, um, you know, companies uh, like. Uh, you name it. I mean, it's literally you name it these days. Uh, uh, majority of the most of the companies they are connected uh, with one another. Now, I try to give an example of uh, um, these uh, brokerage sites like uh, uh, Priceline.com and uh, Hotwire.com and these uh, sites uh, where you go to make your reservation of your flight reservation, and then uh, you also go and then do your uh, hotel reservations, rental car reservations, and whatnot. So the way it is is uh, a, a consumer is going to log into uh, these uh, sites. So let's say here is your um, is your Priceline or Hotwire or any one of those. Now these companies, uh, these companies are are brokers. I mean they they are not. Um, they don't hold the inventory. Meaning that uh, Priceline doesn't have cars, uh, nor uh, do they have hotel rooms uh, as their own property. So uh, they are they are connected. They are connected to uh, whoever it is. Uh, they are connected. They are connected to let's say uh, these these are different hotels. They are connected to those hotels. Uh, these are different airlines. They are connected to uh, the airlines. Uh, and then you have. Uh, uh, whatever services they are going to provide. So they are connected to that. So let's say these are cruise, right? And these are uh, rental cars, right? So they are connected to all of these. So the way the information flows back and forth, the way information uh, flows back and forth between these, these entities uh, is through a certain certain protocol they have to follow. So here is here is a, a hotel or a group of hotels, and in here you could have like you know multiple uh, chains of hotels. This this could be your Hilton, this could be your Marriott, this could be your Ritz, uh, this could be your uh, Hyatt. Uh, you know different types of. Uh, so when they are uh, dealing with uh, the hotel module. Now, uh, when uh, a customer comes and makes his booking from his computer, when he's making a booking, so he's searching for something that Priceline offers. So this GUI is offered by Priceline. So the GUI is Priceline's GUI. So you see that GUI here, and then you make certain selections from here, and then based on what you enter, it 
reads that, okay, this is an airline booking, so they are going to forward it to uh, that airline module. And in here, you would have American and Delta or United or you name it. So they're going to go and based on what you send here, so here, even from your machine, your, when you enter that information, that information is going over the internet to the Priceline server. And Priceline server is going to parse that, that query uh, or whatever you have entered. And then based on what it is, it is going to route it here or route it here or route it here or there. Right. Okay. Now, so that means that Priceline, as an entity, it would be interacting or exchanging information with other other entities. So now the question is, how do they talk? So here is their systems. This is Priceline system. The way they talk is through through API. So what is API? API is nothing but it is it is an application programming interface. So what do you mean by application programming interface? That means that um, in its um, bare bones uh, form, in its minimal form, there are going to be at least two parties, right? One of the party is going to be, one of them is going to be a consumer, right? And the other one is going to be a provider. Right? So the information that flows between the consumer and the provider uh, is all XML, right? XML. So that XML that is flowing between the consumer and the provider, right? Uh, that needs to be nicely packaged, right? And it needs to follow a certain protocol. Now, what is a protocol? A protocol is an agreement. Uh, between two parties, right? A set of rules that they would adhere to, right? Between these two parties. So what are those set of rules? The set of rules is if I need to consume something and if I need to provide something, let us talk in a certain way. So what is the protocol between you and me right now? I am kind of like a provider and you are a consumer, at least with that, as far as uh, this session is concerned. So I am providing you a training. You are You are going to consume that training. So the agreement is uh, um, that I would be providing you 16 hours of training and then you would be paying X amount of dollars for that. And the other agreement is, uh, so now we're talking about rules now. The rules uh, are you would come here on every Saturday and Sunday uh, between certain hours and then you would get that training. So all that is a part of uh, you know the protocol between us. So likewise, between the consumer and the provider, there has to be some sort of protocol that they have to follow. Right? So let's uh, discuss about that. So when you have data flowing back and forth between two parties, right? when you have data uh, flowing back and forth between these two parties, that data has to be, has to be, that, is, that data is all XML. So if it is all XML, then basically we have to uh, understand how the data goes. So let's say it, it all depends on what kind of data we are talking about. So um, for a second here, let's assume that the data is going to be uh, a reservation for a, um, for a, a, a hotel room. Right? If it is going to be the reservation for a hotel room, so uh, now we have already provided that information to to who? To to Priceline. I have already done that. So uh, I have given that information to uh, Priceline. Right. So from my computer, from my computer, I send the information to Priceline. Now the Priceline is going to parse that, and then they are going to send it across to some other some other company. So when they are sending this information, right, these systems, they have to be connected and this is how they are connected using the web service. Now web services, there are multiple types of web services. There is something called a SOAP web service, stands for Simple Object Access Protocol, right. Uh, I'm not going to do that. And then there are REST services. 
right? So uh, we will not talk about REST services, at least today we are not going to talk about that. We, we will talk about the SOAP uh, web services. So if the agreement is we are going to send the information back and forth, right? So one of them is the provider, right? And the other one is the consumer. So now we are not talking yet about where UFT or QTP fits into this big picture. I'm generally talking about you know the partnership or the the architecture of uh, utilizing the APIs, and then we will talk about where how can we test it. So the idea here is uh, the information is going to go, go back and forth. How does the information goes back and forth? Because it's a web service, the information will be in XML. So now, do we need to know XML? Now, if you know XML, that would be, um, you know, extremely beneficial uh, to you, right? Now, what I am going to do is I am going to cover XML uh, enough that uh, you can understand and see what is happening, uh, you know, in terms of the testing of the web services. Now, the XML can be huge. In XML, there are so many things in XML. There is a XSLT and then there is transformation of that and then there is schemas, uh, there's so many things. Now I will be covering again the basics of XML so that we can get our job done and our job is to test the APIs or the web services. So in order to understand uh, that we know that these two parties they need to communicate so the data has to go back and forth. What kind of data is going? So it all depends as who is here, right? So the guy who is here, he's, he's making some reservations. So when he's making a booking, so let's say this is a booking for a hotel, right? So uh, this is a hotel booking, hotel reservation. And if it is a hotel reservation, then there will be, um, you know, some people who would be in that room, right? So uh, here we are talking about, you're talking about, let's say, number of, number of people right and end of number of people so if you see that's one information what other information you you need you basically need other information this is a hotel reservation right so this is a hotel reservation so inside a hotel reservation you first of all need how many people then how many rooms right so this is rooms so let's say this one room you would say, how come there are three people in a, I mean, maybe there is a kid, maybe there's an infant, who knows, I mean, you know, we don't know. So, uh, three people, one room, when do you need that? So, date of arrival, date of arrival, so we need it, uh, let's say, October 14th, that is tomorrow, uh, 2013. So, end of uh, date of uh, and, uh, you know, when are we, uh, you know, getting out of it uh, or whatever. So this is the data which is going. So the whole thing, whatever you have here, uh, whatever I have written here, the whole thing is need, needed to be sent across. So it is packaged into what is called an envelope and then it is sent across. So that is this envelope where, where, you, send, where you send the data inside this envelope. This envelope is called a SOAP envelope. So when the data is going back and forth, the data is all XML, all this data, all this data is going, all this data is going. That is inside the envelope and the envelope is pushed from where? From the consumer, he sends that information to who? To, to the provider. So now the provider has to open that envelope he opens, he or she opens or, or the system opens the envelope because it's not like a human being there. And then once they open the envelope, they have to parse that and then they have to, they have to make the booking. They have to make the booking. So they will be writing into their own databases. They would be sending that, that data into their own database. And then they have to send some information back. What information do you expect that they would be sending back? They would be saying that, okay, uh, we booked a room, this is your confirmation number. So do you agree that we send some data as a consumer, we have to send some data, and even the provider, they have to send some data back, right? We are sending the data in XML, and that data is sitting inside the SOAP envelope, and then the data which is coming back is again coming back as XML, and then we can... Priceline will take that and then 
it, he will uh, they will convey that as whatever the data is to the customer. So the the customer is going to get the confirmation number, uh, and customer is happy because okay, we got the confirmation. So I just talked about few things in here what goes into that I just just to give you an idea you would come back and say that where is the money how much where is the credit card where is this we there's a lot of data which will go in back and forth in there right I just gave you a, a simple picture an idea of how this thing basically would go back and forth all right um, uh, in in one soap envelope uh, there's a question here in one soap envelope is only one set of data packed or it could be a number of sets of uh, data in one soap envelope okay uh, that's a good question um, the the answer to that is you can you can send whatever you want to send in that envelope you can literally send whatever you want to send provided provided you agree now let's say um, you and I, right? Uh, again, there is a contract between you and me, right? The contract, the contract is, you will pay me three hundred ninety-nine dollars, and I have to give you sixteen hours. Now, if I, if if you are paying me uh, ten thousand dollars, and uh, if I'm if I'm giving you uh, four hours, that means that we are not following the contract. Right? I mean, for good or for bad, but we are not following the contract. The contract is, you, you, you give me three ninety nine. I give you what? I give you sixteen hours. So likewise, over here, the contract is, we will say that we have, you have to pass me, you have to pass me this information: number of uh, people, number of rooms total number of uh, days you would be staying da, da 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 right so this is for one one reservation one reservation so this is one request coming in here right so in a soap in a soap envelope this soap envelope when a web service when a web service is being tested you are sending one set of data through this envelope right now can you have one more set inside inside the same envelope right you could have it all depends on the design of that so in order to understand the design we have to look into something called this WSDL WSDL so what is WSDL WSDL is web service description language so in the web service description language in the visitor you'll have all the details of what the contract is what needs to be sent across what the uh, provider is expecting what the consumer is supposed to pass all that information is in a visitor document now the question is oh, how do you get the visitor document how do you understand visitor document and all that now before we go there um, now the the purpose why I'm spending uh, like half an hour 45 minutes as a theory trying to give you this idea is because once you hear the story right I mean once you hear the story if you already have if you let's say if you have read the book and when you go to the movie um, some people they enjoy it more because they have already an idea in their head about you know what it is supposed to be and when they see the movie they'll they'll pretty much you know get a, a more uh, enjoyment out of it or maybe less in. so but there is you will like it or you are more invested in that so with my theory giving you all this and then taking into practical you will have some better understanding of it that's my promise to you so bear with me for another you know 10 15 minutes uh, of more theory and then everything will be clear and clear okay now um in terms of a web service okay I understood all that whatever you mentioned I understood all that but what is a web service what is a web service now for those of you folks who who are, who are technical right um, you you might have heard about about a function you might have heard about a function right what is a function what is a function I mean a function 
right a function is going to basically do some work right it's some code which will do some work what work this function is going to do uh, it depends on what what it is made made for what is the purpose of that function so the purpose of the function could be um, you know take take two numbers and add so if I have a plus if I have I'm trying to make it very simple if I have a and if I have B the function is going to add these two numbers and give it to C so if I if I call this function if I call this function now uh, this function has to have some name so can I call this function as uh, let's say uh, add right so if I call it add and this is a function I call it add so if I do this parentheses right and let's say just for better reading this is the start of the function this is the end of the function let's say right this is the end of the function and for uh, better reading um, you know uh, we are we are putting inside the function only one thing which is it is going to add these two numbers now if it is supposed to add these two numbers when I call this function when I say okay I need to call this function add so what is is it adding so I have to pass to it I should say add uh, uh, hundred comma add uh, 500 so these are these are two two parameters that I have to pass to this function this is one parameter this is another parameter that I have to pass then only I will get some result back right so in a web service think about a function as a think your web service as a function so to a web service depending on what that web service is we have to pass something to that web service I have to pass something so what is that something which we are passing to it those are called input input parameters those are called input parameters so to a web service I have to pass what is called input parameters and then the web service will also give me give me some output so that output is basically nothing but that nothing but that is called the response from the web service so in a web service when we are talking about web service there is a response response to what response to the request so what is the request the request is um, I will give you two parameters I will pass you two parameters you do whatever you have to do with those two parameters and then you give me some response so a web service is in other words a web service is nothing but in a nutshell in a nutshell always remember a web service web service always will take will take some input right which is which is request and it will give you some output which is response so when it comes to web service think about it as request and response the request has to be sent in this envelope right in this envelope the soap envelope and the request is nothing but it comes as XML it comes as XML all this request a equals uh, a equals uh, 500 and B equals whatever so that is coming as an envelope or as XML right two parameters these are two parameters parameter 1 parameter 1 parameter 2 right and the response again is going back as an as an envelope this again is XML is again XML now think about a web service any web service now think about a web service right now this web service this web service is for it to work it has to be hosted hosted what do you mean by hosted it needs to be it needs to be built and placed on a on a server it has to be placed on a server so that server can be uh, a Unix, Sun Solar X, right? It can be a uh, Linux, right? 
or it can be uh, it can be a Windows server. It can be a Windows server, right? Okay, so th this is a web service has to be built and hosted. Other words, deployed. It has to be deployed. It has to be deployed on a server. It has to be deployed on a server. So when it is built, they can build this using Java, right, language. They can build it using .NET, any .NET, right, C Sharp .NET or VB .NET or any language, PHP, whatever, right, multiple, what, we, we don't care. As long as what you and I as testers, what we have to see is when I send it a request, is it giving me a response or not? Right? I mean, if you have that extra knowledge of what server it is sitting on, you know, what language it is, it is used to build it, you know, what there is another component called web, web server, right? And I'll talk about these web servers and all that in the in the future classes. Uh, there are different types of web servers. There is something called IIS. Uh, there is something called WebSphere. There is something called Apache. There is something called WebLogic. There is something called so uh, these are. This, these are uh, WebLogic, WebSphere, right? Tomcat, right? Apache, right? And JBoss, and the list keeps going on. IAS and all that. So these things uh, are important to know, but uh, there is a time for it. So later on, I will introduce you to those things. Right now, if you have to remember, just remember that a web service is something a programmer has created. And he, it is nothing but it's like a function. It will take some input parameters and it will do some work depending on what it is used for. And then it will give me some response. Now, it might be built in Java, in .NET, in PHP, in Python, in Perl, or in Ruby. We don't know. We don't care. At this time, I don't care. Right? And it might be sitting on a Unix box or a Linux box or on a, on a let's say, Windows uh, server. And uh, it might be uh, actually be deployed onto a Tomcat or an Apache or a WebLogic or a WebSphere or JBoss or an IIS. We don't, at this time, it's none of our business. Our business right now is to test a web service. But it is good to know that the whole picture, now you're getting the picture. Hopefully, you got the picture, right? When we are talking about a web service, that means that a programmer has created it. He deployed it, and it is sitting on a server. Now, we need to connect to it and, and pass some input parameters to it and get the data. Now, connect to it, right? That's a question. Connect to it. So that brings us to another thing that we need to know. We need to know the A and the B and the C of a web service. You would say that, what the heck? What is this ABC? I mean, why are you treating me like this? Like ABC, basic things I need to know? Yes, you need to know this ABC. But this ABC is not actually ABC as we say it as ABC. This A stands for address. This B stands for binding. And the C stands for contract, right? So we have to have an understanding of this ABC. Now, what is the ABC? First of all, if the if the web service is here, right, and you need to connect to this web service, you need to know where it is. So you need to know the address of that. So how is the address? The address is either a, a domain name, right? Let's say www dot training right dot net forward slash da 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 forward slash da 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 forward slash da 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 some some address like that right so depending on what that so this is also referred to as this is also referred to as what uh, we also call this as an endpoint endpoint so we need to know the endpoint endpoint is the where the web service is sitting so that that's the address so that I can connect to it, right? That's the endpoint. Once I connect to that web service, right? Now, inside the web service, it will expose, it will expose many things in there, right? What are those things? One could be, this is, this is book a room. Book, right? Book a whatever, room, car, whatever. And this is, so this is like a new order. 
and this is like after you book there's a possibility that you want to change change reservation right so there there can be a make make reservation new reservation new reservation right and this is change reservation and this is there could be something like cancel reservation cancel reservation right so now you have many many of these so what are each one of these these things they are called these are called operations operations right so inside a web service you have one or more operations operations are not nothing but think them exactly as functions so inside a web service there can be a minimum of one function or one operation or many operations so these operations actually will be receiving the input and they will be giving the output and they will be receiving the input in XML they'll be giving the output again in XML so when they receive the input it is called a request when they send the data it is called the response okay so the whole game uh, is about request and response where is the binding coming in where is the contract coming in okay this uh, book a reservation book a reservation when you're booking a reservation um, can you can you tell them anything can you say that I'm coming on a bicycle or I'm come uh, I'm walking to the hotel they would not care they would not care so the information I mean that to you might be the most important thing because you you are walking from the airport to the to the hotel right for whatever reason because you don't have a license DUI <laughs> so I mean if you're DUI probably you would take a cab uh, you're not driving but uh, let's say uh, what something which is big for your own life but for that function it has nothing no meaning so the idea here is what is the binding between the two right what is the binding between the two and what is the contract between 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 the two between who a consumer and a provider the binding on the contract is contract is how many operations that web service will have meaning book cancel change and whatever right uh, those are like three so we are saying that we will be connecting to a web service that web service will expose three three operations so that the contract is those three operations will be will be book a reservation cancel a reservation and change a reservation so these three now for booking a reservation you have to pass some information right <clears throat> what is that information you have you can give them everything maybe you you can give them your age but they they don't want that right uh, probably I mean just to find out if you're minor or not but then you know what do they care if you're like 29 or 39 or 49 right so some information which might be relevant to you is of no significance because they are not looking for that what is of important they want your name right because when you go there they should know that okay you came there so they should give you the uh, room the keys to the room right so no somebody else walking in uh, and claiming that it's you they shouldn't be so they want the name to be the same as what you could produce as an ID because they look at your ID and uh, then give you the key right so name is that and it cannot be an open-ended so date of arrival date of leaving right from what time to what time and what what type of room you want is it like a suite is it like an executive room or it's like a double bed single bed you want to sleep on the couch I mean don't know right all that information you have to give so that goes as a uh, part of the binding right what parameters it will take what parameters it will take. okay so now we have this ABC I was telling you that this this is all a relevant information a and B and C now when you are dealing with uh, a web service now where is this information if you are going to test a web service where is all this information that information will be provided to you in a document called visual document right visual document so let me uh, uh, take you into um, into UFT and uh, see what we can um, do now in terms of a web service so if I am going to um, you know test the web service 
what are, how how can I test the web service? Now think about it. Think about it. And I'm 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 going into practical in about next two minutes or so. Um, so think about it. Um, when you when you are making a, a reservation online, right? And you are entering your name. You enter uh, the date when you want uh, to be there. That night you want that reservation, right? So let's say tonight you want that reservation. So you are making the booking now. You enter your name. You selected the date that you needed tonight. And then you need it for like four people. You set two rooms. And then you uh, entered your credit card information. And then you said uh, go. And then it comes back confirmation. And then it comes back saying that you are booked for in the year um, you know, uh, 2013, but the month of December. Now you're like, you almost want to kill them. So for the system, the web service is working. It is sending the data back. Now the question is, is that data relevant? Is that data is what, because you wanted a room for tonight. If they are giving you a room in December, what do you care? Right? You might not be here in December. You might be, you know, on vacation or, or, or whatever. Right? So when we are testing a web service, we have to check that when we send something, what response are we getting back? Right? So how do we do that using UFT? So we have to start off with file and say new. New what? New test. So we go in here and we say new test. Now, is that a GUI test or API test? He'll say that, come on, come on, please, don't even ask me that question. All right, okay, API. All right, so what API is that? Let's say we are testing the web services APIs for a company called uh, ePay, ePay, ePay Systems, right? ePay Systems, uh, and their API testing is what we are doing. So we, I gave some name, ePay Systems. And I will be saving wherever we are saying it is. It says screencast, so I don't want to save in screencast. So I'm going to click on this, right, and navigate and come out of this, and then uh, go to uh, uh, go to UFT and create a folder and say ePay systems API testing. All right. So inside it, I am going to I'm going to save create this test. So here I go. I'm creating creating ePay systems API testing. Okay. Going to take a few seconds for it to um, do the work uh, under the hood, and then it's going to come back and populate few things here, right? Populate few things here, and of course we'll do something in here. Right. Okay. So let us see what it is going to do. Now, um, depending on um, you know how uh, fast uh, your machine is, uh, this should do it uh, sooner. But again, um, understand that I'm working on an environment where we have a virtual machine, so we'll take a, a couple extra seconds. You got to bear with me. Okay. Here we are. So now we have in the solution explorer. I have my ePay systems API testing, right? If I expand that, I have some references. If I expand the references, what you see here, whoa, what you see here is a lot of stuff here. Now, for those of you folks who have done, uh, because there are some people here who are developers, uh, who have done some uh, .NET programming, you should be very familiar with all this system.core, system, system.data system and all that, right? So these are nothing but, these are called assemblies. These are assemblies, kind of like, uh, you know, DLL. So you you and I, as a tester, uh, let me see here, uh, these are, these are assemblies, right? These are files, these are assemblies, system.core assemblies. So you don't have to worry too much about it. The only thing which you don't do is, never ever delete anything from here under references. If you delete anything from references, that's, that's, now the whole thing is over, finish, right? You can't do much uh, here. So don't touch the references, right? Um, now, the other things, the flow, events, and user code, I will come to that 
right? Um, let's talk a little bit about the middle part. I mean, you have, uh, this is a zoom level if you are interested in making it bigger, smaller, you can do that, all right? And again, this links only, I'll come to it later. And here is the properties, right, the properties. Now, this properties uh, changes in context to where we are, right? So, if I'm doing something here, doing something here, doing something here, the property uh, kind of like changes. Okay, why are we here? Because we want to test a web service. Okay, if you want to test a web service, then you have to you have to have this Visdel. You have to have a Visdel, right? So what does Visdel tells you? Here it is. Um, Visdel is. Uh, let me just uh, take uh, some uh, Visdels that we have, which we use. Okay, so let me just click that. Uh, let me see. Is there anybody here who has done a SOAP UI with me uh, earlier? Uh, anybody who has done a SOAP UI with me? Just say yes or no. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Devanshu is the only one. So probably it's uh, very boring for you, Devanshu. Um, so uh, you got to <laughs> bear with me. Um, you know, uh, today's session is kind of like uh, boring for you because uh, this you already know. So, um, but you would see it from a QTP or from a UFT point of view. Um, now, how about the rest of you folks? Um, uh, I know Indra has uh, said no um, and uh, Charan Preet says no, but how about uh, the rest of you guys? Uh, uh, Alam, yes. Uh, Samir, no. Uh, Sirisha, no. Um, Elena, are you, uh, have you, do you have the knowledge of SOAP UI? Have you done any SOAP UI in the past? Um, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, Mati, you did uh, work on SOAP UI two years ago. Okay, good. Good, good. Um, uh, Okay, very good. Okay, excellent. Um, alrighty, so um, here is what uh, we would be doing. Um, let me uh, bring up the browser, right, and uh, show you something. Okay, what you are seeing here, what you are seeing here is a Visdel file. What you are seeing here is a Visdel file, and as you can see, uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff in here. A lot of stuff in here. Now we have to we have to have a good understanding of a Visdel file before we could go and do anything in API testing. Okay. Now um, looking at any Visdel file, it could be like, wow. I mean, this is crazy, man. I mean, this is too much. I can't handle it, right? Um, but trust me, uh, it might take a good five minutes for you to understand everything about and you will become a master of Visdels. <laughs> really, you will become a master of Visdel. Now, um, web service uh, description language, it describes this web service. So we have a web service here called, we have a web service at trainingright.net, we hosted a web service called ePay system. So that ePay system, right, it's a .NET web service, so it, it exposes any web service will have what operations in it so it will have operations in it there are many operations as you can see the many many operations in it so when you have a visdel when you are scared of the visdel do this do this now you're not scared <laughs> right there's nothing in there now if when you expand this is what i mean jokes apart this is what i want you to do right i want you to just 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 make sure that the big web service, you just uh, collapse it so that we can take some baby steps, one step at a time we will take and understand what is happening. So I'm just collapsing, uh, you know, all the child nodes of the Visdel document. So here is the Visdel document and it is also an XML document. So I'm just uh, um, trying to collapse the child nodes of it so that I can explain you what is going on. So if you see, there are there are many in here. There are many, and it will take uh, me a long time to do that, right? So what I will do is let let me go to the most bottom most part of it. 
in the bottom most part of it, if you see here, this part, right, this part, uh, this is a part of this, of the service. So when you expand the service node, when you expand the service node, inside the service node, it will tell you something about the address. So remember, we said uh, A, A, B, and C. So your A, the address, you can easily find out the address by going into the bottom most, right, and then expand the service, and that will give you the address of where this web uh, service is hosted. You need the address. You need the address. So you need the WSDL file. So one part of it is the address. Now we are left with the binding and the contract. Binding exposes to you all the operations. And if you see here, if you see here, these are the operations. There is a sale, authorization, refund, uh, void, and for sale, capture, cash advance. Everything has a soap in and soap out. So the, if, you, if you don't look into the soap in and soap out, anything before the soap in is the name of the operation. So every operation will have an input and an output. Soap in, soap out. So sale is the operation. So sale soap in will talk about what we must be sending to the sale operation for it to work. So if I expand here, if I expand here, right, in the sale operation, it should basically go and then tell me what, so if you see up here for the sale, for the sale, if I expand the sale, sale, if I expand, these are the parameters that I need to pass. One is the credit card number, expiration month, expiration for the year, and the amount I want to process. So sale as an operation is taking four, four parameters, right? Four parameters. One is uh, credit card number, expiration, year, and amount. So if I pass these four parameters to it, right, then it will, it will return me. Look at the soap out. It will return me what? It will return me also some parameters. Where is that information of what it is going to return? Again, if you go into types, types, it will tell you inside the type, the response of that is going to be a string. It will send me back a string. So when I am sending, I am sending a string as a credit card number, expiration also as a string, year also as a string, and amount as a double. So these are the four things I'm sending. And in response to it, I am getting a string back, right? So this is the agreement. This is the binding. The contract is there is going to be a sale as an operation. That's the contract. The binding says that, okay, for it to work, I have to pass these four parameters. And the type of the parameter is also here. And then I get back some string back. Right. So that is how the relationship, that is the contract, that's the binding. It is extremely critical that you understand this. If you have an understanding of this, then we are fine. We are just fine and then we can go ahead and then do our testing. So I will be doing the testing for the sale, right, for the sale. So let me go in here and this is, I opened the test. Now, this API testing can be done for anything. But we have to do it for the ePay systems. So ePay systems details are where? In the WSDL document. So let's import the WSDL document. So here it is, import WSDL document. So if, when we uh, click on this one, import WSDL document, I am going to go and then import that and see what happens. Okay. When you click on that, click on that, uh, a box pops up. And in this box, it is saying that, all right, are you going to give me the visual detail from a URL or from a UDDI? I'll come to UDDI uh, later, right? That is, UDDI is like, a, let's say if you don't know, if you, you have to eat, you know that if you go to a restaurant, you can eat, right? But if you don't know where that restaurant is, Right? So what do you do? 
you say, I go to Google. I pull my phone, smartphone, and I go to Google, and I type uh, looking for uh, Chinese uh, place. Uh, you don't want to eat Chinese. Let's say it's so Italian or Indian, right? So you would, so for a web service, if you do not know the exact address of that, then you will go to UDDI. It is like a, like a yellow pages or this is universal um, discovery, description, interchange, something like that, right? So right now we have the URL, so we go in here and we paste the URL, right? We paste. It. So do you understand that in order for you to do an API testing, you have to have the visitor or the endpoint or the address of that where that web service is hosted. So, very first thing you would ask is, give me the visual document. So when they ask you to test, you would say, API testing, visual document. Give me visual document. Once they give you the visual document, you paste it here. Now in the advanced settings, in the advanced settings, if to access that web service, if you, if it is, because sometimes what happens is, these web services are subscription based. Meaning that you cannot access that unless you give the username, password, and all that. So that's the uh, authentication information, username, password, and all that. My web service, the one which we are hosting on uh, training, right, I'm not asking you to uh, do anything, at least not for this one. Maybe down the road I'll give you an example where I'm looking for that information, but right now, no. So we just put it in there and we hit OK. All right, so it is importing now that information. And lo and behold, what you see on the left side is, whoa, something here, right? So if you go from solution, if you go from solution, if you go into toolbox, toolbox, very first thing is under this web services, if you expand, this is my TR ePay system, TR ePay system. Now let me expand that, let me expand. And what I see here is TREPay system uh, SOAP and SOAP 12, right? Okay, when I created that web service, right, I created it for backward compatibility. In SOAP, there are two versions of the SOAP. The latest version is 1.2, which is this one, right? And this is the older version. So for backward compatibility, I kept this as well. So, but let's say if one of them was not there, so for time being, this either ignore this or ignore that because they are they have the copy of one another right so if it is not there then you could just go in here or go in here expand this so we expand under the web services under the web services you expand that and you have our ta uh, tr epay web service right and if you expand inside it you have this and if you expand it what we are going to see now inside it are all my operations all my operations so I have sale as an operation authorization as an operation refund void now these are all the uh, things of a um, like a payment um, electronic payment service uh, so long time back when I was working on one of the projects it was more like uh, uh, your PayPal and all that um, uh, so we were creating the web services, so this is just a simple sample of that, right? Very basic sample of that. So for a sale, um, we have to, so what is the sale? Sale is an, now if you don't know what it is, just tab on that, just click on that. It tells you that it is an operation, executes the sale web service operation. So sale is an operation. This is a web service now. So if you see, this is a web service port and sale is an operation. Now, so if you want to test sale as an operation, what do you do? You take it, you drag it here into the test flow and you drop it in there. What you see here is this is sale as an operation. This is a part of your test flow now. When you, are, when you execute, when you run your test flow, whatever operations are in there, they will get executed. Down the road, maybe I want to test all of them, but right now, let me start here. So, in my test flow, the first, first operation that I need to test is sale. Once I click on the sale, what happened? On the right side, on the right side, I have some information. 
right? Some information. Now, pay attention to it. If I am going too fast, stop me. If you are, if you want me to repeat, I'll repeat it. But pay attention to it because the first time I'm gonna go very slow. Uh, but then later on, uh, you know, I'm going to be, once you have the idea of this, once you say that, okay, I got it, then in future, I'm going to be just dragging, dropping, and then doing things very fast, all right? So stop me if you have any issue here. Okay, let's um, look into what we have here. So let me go over everything here in this window. It's a property window. The windows which are important is the Solution Explorer, Solution Explorer, inside the Solution Explorer, other tab is the tool toolbox. When you go into the web services in the toolbox, it exposes all the operations. We drag the operation here. And when you highlight this operation, you see the properties of properties of that operation. Now, what is the name of the operation? Sale. Now, had I had more than uh, one here, there was one more here, let's say. Let's say if there was one more, I could see it here I could see it in here right now these all these is related to the sale as a property all right uh, or rather as an uh, operation okay so let me go and look into in here there is only this this inside this activity this operation right so if you had more then we'll have more Okay, now what you can do is you can highlight these things and you can, you can, um, now you're talking about the whole of that. So you could go and then you could, you could expand, you could collapse because if there are a lot of stuff, you can expand collapse. And you could also basically go and then if you want to name this uh, test flow as something else, you can do that. And if you want to uh, right now, so there can be multiple test flows. So right now we are just dealing with this one test flow and inside the test flow I am dealing with the sale now. So about the sale, what are you looking at about the sale? Okay, um, do you know, do you know that, uh, let me just make some space here. Um, see that uh, there is there are two parts to it there are two parts to it there is there is an there is an input part right and then there will be an output part which will which is which is the sale response I'll come to the output part later so let me focus on the input so this window just to make space this window I will I will just uh, reduce the size of that all right so um, so I'll just reduce the size of it so that I make more space for this input. Okay, remember I was talking to you about envelope, 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 envelope. Here is my envelope. So it the whole show begins like this. Inside the envelope, inside the envelope, right, you have something called a header, header. Now, header, unless and until we put something into the header, it will be empty. There is nothing in there. Right? So inside the envelope, there is a header and after the header, there is the body. And all your data which you are sending across is inside the body. Of course, the body is also inside the envelope. So envelope, right? header for now, don't worry about it. And then you have the body. Inside the body, right now I have only one. If I bring authorization here, then you would see some more in here, right? So right now I have only sale. Let us look into sale. How many parameters we are passing to sale? One, two, three, four. Make sense now? Yeah. So what is the data which you are passing in this sale? Right now it is empty. It is empty. There's nothing in here, right? And if you look in here, I am, I am in sale and in sale, I am in the grid of the sale, grid of the sale. Grid means that this is a pictorial representation of that, right? It is giving you more like a, like a visual, right? It's more like a visual now. Now, if I, same deal, if I take you into, sorry, 
if I take you into same thing into a text take a look into that now right let me make some space take a look into that so what I have here if I could copy and show it to you in uh, notepad and uh, okay I want you to take a look and this becomes very easy so this this is XML I was talking about XML has to go back and forth this all this is sitting inside the envelope right this is the this is the envelope so we are saying that whatever this is inside the envelope is all XML. Is all XML. So the first line is called the prolog. Prolog. So you have a prolog. Prolog basically states uh, whatever is following is what is the type of that data. So that data is XML. It is version one dato. Encoding is UTF eight and all that. Right. You don't have to worry about this. Right. But it's there. The prolog. Now comes your envelope. Inside the envelope, inside the envelope, there is a body, there is a body, right? And it did not even give you anything about the head because the head was empty. I mean, don't take it literally that the head is empty, but there is nothing inside the head. So we can call it as an empty head, right? Um, <laughs> so uh, inside the envelope, we have a body. This is the whole body, right? Inside the body, inside our body. There is one thing which is very important. If that goes away, everything, it's a dead body, right? What's that very important? Our soul, right? The body can be there. The brain inside the body will be there. The heart will be there. The kidneys will be there. The liver, would, everything would be there. But that will be of no use. And then you quickly want to get rid of that body by cremating it, you know, putting it six feet under. Uh, once the soul is out. Right? So it's all about the soul. So what is the soul of our web service? That is called the payload. So this is this is the main thing. This is the main thing. So you have to understand this. If you can, you know, understand your soul, you understand your life. Well, I mean, let's not go there. This is supposed to be a UFT 11.5 class. Teach me that. Don't talk about souls and brains and this. Okay, anyways, coming back inside the body, this is my payload. And the payload and the payload right now is about an operation called sale. Right? About an operation called sale. Now, you are seeing only double here, right? You are seeing only double. You're not seeing the other ones because of the fact that um, you know they were empty so it did not put anything double because of the fact that double has a data type of uh, uh, double amount has a data type of double so double will uh, keep a value of zero so that's why it is showing up and nothing else is showing up so we go back into the grid now if I put something as the values inside the grid so what do you think is the uh, credit card number we want to send and where exactly that would be going in real life so in real life you will have a GUI, you will have a GUI, you will have a GUI here, right? The GUI will have the many things, your name and this and that, right? And then finally, there will be payment information, right? This is payment, payment, payment information. So for the payment information, they want you to enter the credit card number. They want you to enter the expiration. They want you to enter the year and then they want to enter the uh, amount, right? So when you click on this submit, when you click on the submit, right? So uh, this, all this is probably going in and getting deposited into the database. But this, this information is being passed to a third party, right? And what that third party is going to do, that third party uh, is going to check if the credit card is good or not. If it is good, they, they will say that, ah, this transaction went through. They will, they will send uh, some, some message back. So they are taking what? They are taking credit card number, month, expiration year, amount. So four things are going here inside the 
soap envelope inside the soap envelope. So this all this is GUI. So QTP or uh, what's uh, the name? This UFT can do the GUI testing and also do the API testing. Notice that this is this is the GUI testing. I am entering the name and the but part of it is the API testing. So we can also do the API using the tool UFT Unified. We can do this testing and we can do that testing. So yesterday I showed you a little bit of this testing with the screencast, how to do it. Now I'm showing you something about this. So let's understand how this testing works and then you already become a master of, uh, not really a master, but then you have a good knowledge of uh, this one. And then we will continue with our uh, uh, complete framework where we are going to unify uh, basically our GUI and the, this testing and create a, um, create in here where create in here with our uh, um, uh, workflow uh, the GUI testing components as well as the API testing components. Both would go in here and data is going to go back and forth between the two. We'll see how to pass the data from the GUI into the uh, API and then API executing it, getting the results, passing it back into the report, blah, 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 all that good stuff. All right. Anyway, so let's come back um, and uh, do this. Uh, um, and uh, do this. So here in the credit card, uh, from here, let's say the guy had entered here some number, four, three, six, eight, nine. So we are we are doing this. We make believe that that's that number he had entered, four, three, two, five, one, four, three, five, two, 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 right? That's the credit card number. Okay. Now the expiration is. Uh, month is 12 and the year is uh, 15 next year and the amount we want to process is right uh, $399 okay all right so I have some data now this is the input data going through the envelope okay very good now this is this needs to be this data which he enters here, this needs to be sent to this endpoint, right? It needs to be sent. So the, a request has to go and then it will process it, do whatever it has to do, right? Whatever it has to do, it will do that and then come back with a response. So now if I go and look into it, now this is the response I'm looking. I'm not going to get the response unless I send it across, correct? So how do we send it across? Here we go, right? I am going to run this. I prepared my input. This is my input. I prepared my input, right? I prepared my input. I am sending it. Let us see what feedback or what response. Should not be using the word feedback. Response we're going to get. So here we go, right? Okay, so it is saying, are you sure you want to run this? Yeah, I want to run this. Where do you want to uh, get the, uh, where do you want to uh, hold the results of this testing in a temporary run, right? Okay, run. Right? It is running right now. It is running and then it did something. Now, I don't even know what it did, right? So what we are going to do is, it is the first time, if you see here, the first time it is going to, uh, take some time to run. Why? Because it has to do compilation, compilation it has to do and then it has to execute the web service and fetch the result. All that happened without even me pointing it out to you. So where did all that happen? Now that happens, that happens over here if you see here, see here, all that happened. So when we started it, let me just uh, go over with you in the output, in the output log, in the output log. By the way, if you cannot see the output log, because in the bottom here, I have the output, active screen, data, errors, right? So I will go into the output. If you cannot see it, you can just go into view and then, you know, select this output and then you can see the output. Okay, in the output, the, the workflow started right and the step is it started the workflow right and then there's the parent one and then it executed that and then it went in there then it went into the first iteration that was the only iteration and now here it passed the request 
take a look into the request. Again, I will copy the request from here and because it's too small for us to read and I will open this request here. This is the actual request that went, right? So let's look into this, oops, let's look into this request, right? Uh, just make it uh, more presentable so that you can see uh, what happened. Okay, so if you look into this part, right, here is my envelope, envelope, right, sale operation, ah, this is the credit card, month is 12, this is 15, 399, this is the part of my request that went across, very good, very good, that's what it is saying, that's what it is saying, request that it went right now let's go further down and if you see so it went where it went to this da 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 trading right wherever right sending the request to the server now after it sends the request here is here is basically this is exactly the request which which went and then this is the response it is talking returning the response returning the response to the previous channel it is returning the response what is the response? Here is the response. Let's capture, let's copy this response, come back in here and and go further down and just show it to you. This is going to be the response. Let's take a look into the response. Again an envelope? Yeah, envelope. This is a body? Yes, body. This is the end of that. So anything which is inside the body is of importance. What came back? What came back? some response came back to what to the sale now what is that result for the sale that came back? this is exactly what we have to report now we should capture this information and we should say that this is what came back so uh, the data which came back is this so the data the response that came back is transaction ID 539 was approved with the approval code of that right and something oh that's it I guess so that's that's the message that came back so now is my web service successful yeah it did ran it got all that data back right everything came back that was the data right now do you want to see if it passed go and look into the results and then let's see what will show up in the result here we go in the results in the result we have we have here Test ePay system API testing summary. It started. Here is my test flow. I go inside the test flow. Look into the summary. Look into the summary. And here is the, for iteration one, here is my summary. Everything is, is here. Right? Now, you will see some data here. Right? You would see some data. So, let's, let's discuss about the captured data. Right. Let's uh, look into the data that was uh, captured in here. Uh, so, uh, ah, here for the sale web service, you go inside the sale web service and take a look into what was sent. So, there is the web service call property. Sometimes if the web service is down, you, you won't get anything back. So, what you have to look into is HTTP status code. HTTP status code must always be 200. If you're not getting a 200, that means that something is wrong on the server side, on the server, right? So, where is my server right now? My server is, my server is this training right. So, on training right, I have this web service, it is hosted and it is working because we have a proof of that because we got a 200 here. Let's say on your test bed, on your test environment, if the server goes down for whatever reason and all, if you see um, that it is not sending you any data back and if then quickly you should come back and look into it, what kind of HTTP status code I have. If you have anything other than 200, then, then that's, that's uh, a, a warning to uh, the guys who are maintaining the server that, hey, something is wrong, it's not running. So what kind of other HTTP status codes can come? There is something called a 404. 404 is, they have given you this address, they have given you the endpoint, they gave you this endpoint, right? 
they give you this endpoint but when you go to the endpoint there's nothing there uh, so they might they might be spelling uh, wrong spelling or something so 404 is resource not found web service not found at that address there could be 500 500 is what internal server error this web service for it to return whatever it returned it has to do few things I mean it has to execute the code and then check and then give you so maybe while doing that it times out or it uh, the, the the script is not good it errors out and it gives you a, a 500 500 is a uh, that kind of an error that server error there could be other errors as well right so the HTTP status codes is what we have to look so now we are seeing that uh, messages it performed successfully now if you go further down here is your thing right so we http header information header information is who did we call we we went to this host we went to this host on that host we are running uh, this this is .net web service as you can see it's not a java web service it's a .net web service and we are using what this ias what is an ias it's a web server did i tell you that there are apache tomcat jboss websphere weblogic and all that so what is the what is the architecture of our of our um, total solution which we are providing to our clients now so we have a dotnet uh, framework which we are using powered by dotnet and this is we are using a dotnet framework 4.0 and then it is using ias uh, 7.5 as the web server so these are all the details technical details I mean if you need it it is here right now the actual details are request and response request was sent as you know here are your uh, you know credit card number and expiration month and all that and then the response which you got was transaction ID dot 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 right that is it that is it now let me see what kind of question we have um, why is it showing pass since we have not passed anything as expected results? Now, I mean, you know, unless you have your checkpoints and all that, uh, by default, if you're getting any results back, uh, then it is a pass. Now you can have your checkpoints and you can have, you know, whatever you have and then do enhancements to your uh, web service by adding all that, right? So right now, the way it is, is uh, this is a happy path scenario. If you get any data back, uh, then it will just say that uh, it executed what you uh, wanted it to execute and we, we got the results back so it's a pass now you could always go and then compare it and then decide uh, um, is visible and endpoint is the same um, no uh, endpoint is in a visual in a visual we had we had a we had B and we had C all that technical was a B and C so endpoint is only a endpoint is only a so B and C is your binding and contract. Contract is how many, what different operations we have. That's the contract. So we say that there is going to be sale, there is going to be void, there is going to be capture, there is going to be authorization, there is going to be, and then there is going to be, let's say, cricket, right, or baseball. So this is not there in the contract. So how did it come in the contract so if it is there in the contract so the contract will expose the operations which are there so if you are making a call if you are running a, a service called uh, baseball in ePay system well it is not there so contract is only about you know the things which they promise you that they can provide you the service for so they can provide you the service for sale for void for capture for this for but not for anything else which you want so that's the contract binding is okay to use an operation how much I have to send can I send my age if I want to process a credit card don't need they don't need what do they need four input parameters you are dying to give your age but they don't care about it so the binding is okay in a contract which is an operation what is expected what are the input parameters what is the type of that all that is the binding so a b c is complete is visible so now the question that come uh, comes back is is visible and uh, um, endpoint the same no endpoint is a part of the visible it's a of the visible okay good excellent we got it this far so we are all happy now let me take your questions if you have any 
if you don't have any questions, we will go further and then do a few more things uh, before we uh, end the day. So uh, any questions you guys have? Uh, okay. Um, I guess no questions. Okay. If there are no questions, um, now let's say we want here, we want a lot of data to be tested. It's not like, so do you think that every time I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to enter this information every time, 12, 13, this, that, every time? No, I won't do that. So that information must be someplace, right? So let's talk about uh, where is that uh, information. Um, so uh, that information would be uh, basically inside this data. So we will go and prepare this data table and then we will pass the, this data from here. Um, uh, okay, we have uh, something in here. Uh, Yelena, yes. Uh, um, yeah, uh, I have unmuted you. Go. You have a question, Yelena? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, so, what are the numbers next to the operation? Uh, like five and three going either way. Oh. Is it the number of input. Oh, this one. Uh, this is yeah. basically. Yeah, this is basically. It is. It is telling you uh, that it can. It can. This. These, these are your parameters. These are your parameters, and. Uh, don't worry about it giving you five because it is counting the any as well in there. Uh, but it's always like whatever parameters you have to pass, that's that's what it is. And whatever is coming back, that's what it is. So you, you just have to focus on the on the parameters which you're sending. So it is counting uh, the any as also a parameter, so you don't have to worry about that. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. All right, so let us uh, continue uh, with uh, uh, here how we are going to prepare this uh, data. So the data can come from uh, your database, uh, can come from your Excel and all that. So right now today, I'm just going to do a local uh, table for now, right, a local data table, and then we fetch it from here. Once we get uh, going with the local, and then uh, later on we'll uh, discuss about how to do it with uh, Excel and database and XML and all that good stuff. Okay, so here is my local uh, table. So data source name is uh, ePay uh, System um, Test Data. All right. Okay, so in that, what kind of data am I going to pass? So if I click on that, this is my column, first column, and my first column is going to be my CC number, right, credit card number. And that is the uh, string data type, and I can describe this is a credit card number, right? Okay. Now, after that, I'm going to do plus, and this second argument is what? How many? So, uh, Yelena noticed that there were five here, but the actual thing which we need to pass is the credit card number, and there's an expiration uh, month. And that is also a string. So I will say that CC expiration uh, month, right? Okay. Oops. Expiration month. And then we come in here, add one more, and we do uh, exp year. And that is going to be CC expiration year, right? Um, yeah, and finally we go and have the amount uh, to process, right? And that was a double. Uh, that was a double and amount to charge, right? Oh, the same. Okay, so this is the structure of my local data table. So here it is. So that's my local data table structure that I have created, right? So now we can populate this. So I'm just going to make believe we will enter something in there. Uh, 12, uh, and this is 15, and this is 420, right? And we come in here, 
we do that. Uh, and this is uh, 10, and this is 16, and this is uh, 5, 20, and this is 4, 7, 8, 4, two, 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 right? And this is going to be uh, uh, 9, and this is going to be 9, cannot be nine right um, so uh, there is uh, we should we should try with something like that right so let's go with nine and and come back negative data right and uh, let's uh, do that right and now I'm gonna try with some crazy number here And uh, this is going to be 88, 88, and this is going to be $3, right? And then I'll have a good one, right? And this is uh, uh, 2 and 3 and uh, 555. Okay, so we got some data there. So... Uh, we save the data. Now, now next thing we got to do is uh, we got to bind uh, this, right? So we come here, and we no longer would be interested in this, right? So we have to click on this link here, and uh, from that link, I have to say the data source link from data source which source this source what is that over here I need to pass credit card number uh, and that so that will take care of that binding for me right data source epay system underscore test data cc num um, here do that again uh, this time that and that and we continue so as you can see I mean if you understand the whole thing creating a uh, a framework uh, is basically a piece of cake, right? Okay, now let us see how many iterations. So I'm going to do that. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, 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 over here, when I click on this one, see on this one, test flow, it will tell me that go and execute this operation for each loop, right? For each loop, for the item in this ePay test data, ePay test data. All right. So now I have said that. Okay, go ahead and then do that for each item in that. All right. Okay. So let me uh, take a look into everything in, he, in here. Everything looks good to me. Uh, I'm gonna save it. Um, you can you can run it before you run. Right now I'm looking into the data. I can go into my output, I can right click and clear that and, and just see what is going on. So let me just go up here a little bit, uh, see. Uh, should we create one column for save to response? Um, yeah, we can do that as well. Uh, we will capture that and then we will do that. Right now what I will do is uh, I'll take step by step and see uh, what we want to do right now. Okay, so um, here in the uh, build, design, debug, user logger, right? So uh, it'll show if it has not uh, built, it'll show me the build. Uh, otherwise, you can go into the user logger and then see what you want to see in the user logger, right? So we can look into that. Um, alrighty, so again, this is up to you. If the build is failing, you can look into the build part of it or you could come back and this is the output window, right? Okay, so here we go, right? Uh, run that. So compilation started. It is going to compile. This is all the compilation which is going on and all that, right? So, um, and uh, believe it or not, uh, the test is completed. The test is completed. So now we have received some response. Either you could go and look into it, or I better come here and look in here. So if I look in here, it will give me the total number of iterations here. So the total number of iterations are, uh, let's see, inside this, right, this is the iteration 1, 
for sale and what went and what came back. So uh, 420 was the amount and uh, this was approved. Now in the second iteration, right, now uh, what was the amount? Uh, the amount was 520 was approved as well. So now come back in here and do that and if you see uh, we were sending some this was still fine so it said sorry transaction ID uh, whatever so this is sorry message is was not approved for whatever reason it did not approve let's see what happens here right in the fourth one this is where we send some bad information so I think right uh, yeah the Expiration was 88 month. There's no, nothing like a month 88, right? At least the year is fine, but the uh, and even the year is a past, right? Uh, so this was approved. Congratulations! You found a bug. Found a bug. Now you are like, what? How the heck the everything pass? Why did it say that everything? Well, we did not do that part. We did not do that part. You know, for it, a pass or a fail is because there's no checkpoint right now. And uh, there's nothing which we are comparing it to and all that. So for it that it executed it, it's a pass. But now do you agree with the data it is re returning? That we did not. So we did not do the checkpoint. So the checkpoint is, okay, get something. So that's, that's where we are. So now coming back, and if you look into uh, this one, the last one uh, was 5555. Okay. Now, the web service is returning, always returning something, but what it is return, returning, you're not agreeing with it, right? Okay. Now, let me uh, take you into a situation where we can force it to fail. I'll force it to fail with some data, right? Um, so, what I'm going to do here is uh, the web service is not intelligent enough that it it sees 88. It still is returning, uh, you know, but I want it to return a fault, right? So this is what I will do it. I'll force it to return a false so, so that we can see how a false is going to. So I'm going to process a large amount, right? I'm going to process a very large amount and see if it can take that. That's, I mean, I wish I'm that credit card processor to see this large of a transaction. But, uh, hey, there you go. So, we're going to try now. We're going to try now and see uh, how it uh, works. Right. Um, okay. So, we'll see what it has returned. Going into the output, um, we know that it did ran all that. Let's go into the report. Take a look into the report. Ah, now we see something. Now we see something. Okay, so right here, first iteration failed. The next four pass, even though this is garbage, but even that pass, this is like, uh, when I say garbage, meaning that the data was like, uh, the intelligence of the web service is questionable here. When you pass 88 as a month and then it's still... Uh, whether it is sorry or whatever, right? So sorry is, is okay, but if it had processed that transaction, that's not okay. Let's come back and talk about this one, iteration. Uh, one where I had given uh, such a large set of data, what happens? And let's see uh, the type of fault we are getting back. Okay, so the amount uh, which I mentioned, it could not even handle that. That was a little too much. So we have a SOAP fault, right? We have a SOAP fault. And the SOAP fault is... Basically, it is coming back and says that, ah, you have, uh, we got a problem. Server was unable to process uh, uh, your request uh, system.overflow exception. So arithmetic uh, operation resulted in an overflow, yada, 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 right? So convert that into da, 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 da. Okay, so this is as uh, we were expecting it. This is what it is. Okay, so now what we will be doing is uh, in the next class, I will be going and I will be showing you everything about the checkpoints. We'll be doing some checkpoints and then we'll be bringing the data 
um, back and then we will be storing the data back and then we will be creating some uh, uh, good report by writing it into the report. So you know about the reporter object, so we will be using the reporter object to write something back into the report and see how we can do that. All right, so um, there are a couple of uh, new things uh, which uh, uh, we will be covering as a part of uh, our next session. So I'm going to uh, conclude here today waiting for your questions. Uh, if you have any questions, um, then I'll take your questions. Uh, now, um, as a part of the assignment, um, the sooner you start working on uh, U of T 11.5, the better it is because you can, uh, you know, keep up well with uh, me and uh, you know basically do the same thing so the assignment for day one was uh, preparing the environment you know make sure that you download uh, the software install the software and then make sure that you do the GUI testing of what we did yesterday so yesterday I talked about uh, um, simple recording of the script then I talked about adding the object to the object repository then I uh, created the script by hand so after we created the script by hand and then we talked about enhancing it by bringing in some variables. We, uh, I showed you how to create a variable, how to assign values to the variables, how to use those variables within the script I showed you. Then after that we uh, took uh, one uh, step further ahead by creating functions. So I created um, uh, more than uh, one function and then uh, after we created the function we looked into how to create a simple function with no arguments, with no parameters. Then I showed you with the function generator as how to create a function with arguments. So there were two arguments that we were passing it to the first function um, and then uh, we took uh, those functions and then we placed them into a function library. After we placed them into a function library, we associated that function library to uh, the test um, and then we saw everything working there. That was the GUI part of it. Now today we started off with the uh, web services. Uh, I introduced you to the um, basically uh, the architecture of a web service I, I talked to you uh, not in too much detail but I gave you uh, idea of you know what basically goes back and forth now between uh, uh, a client and, and a server between a, a consumer and a provider and then the, when the data flows uh, it has to be in XML format and that is sitting in a SOAP envelope and then how a SOAP envelope is constructed you, you have the envelope and then you have the header and you have the body inside the body is the payload and then when you send the data across uh, it gets executed uh, on the server. On the server I gave you a little idea of what goes on the server in the form of uh, different boxes. There could be like a Windows server or it could be like a Unix or a Linux box in terms of the platforms we don't care if it is Java, if it is .NET, if it is PHP, it is uh, uh, Perl, Python as the languages which they could be creating. As far as the web servers are concerned again I gave you like, some examples of uh, using uh, let's say your uh, Apache or JBoss or Tomcat or WebSphere, WebLogic or IIS. In our example, I took uh, the example of uh, the .NET web service which we are hosting it on uh, uh, the training right server. We got connected to it uh, by creating the API testing and in the API testing I showed you the most critical part of it is the WSDL. Inside the WSDL I parsed the WSDL and I showed you everything inside the WSDL in terms of what goes in there in terms of ABCs we talked about the address the binding and the contract and uh, address being the endpoint is required as a part of the URL configuring your web service the API testing we started the API test I put the uh, visible in there then we connected I showed you in the grid um, basically your uh, the request and uh, the response and then we hard coded the, the parameters for the operation with uh, some numbers, we executed it, I showed you the report and then after that we went in and then we parameterized it uh, with the data coming from a local table and we passed that and then we tried the happy path scenario and then we tried with the negative uh, um, you know, data and then we saw the, uh, the web service failing and then we reported that. Now the rest of the story is what I have to hear from your side. Uh, do we get these recorded sessions? Of course you'll get the recorded sessions. You should be getting the recorded sessions. Uh, it'll take about like a good 45 minutes to an hour for the video to process uh, and then we will upload it and you should be able to see that. Um, where do you find the uh, 
links uh, to download um, 11.5. Okay, uh, what I have done is uh, I I will send you the links. I will send you the links to download it. Um, it's um, it's uh, here. Uh, one second. Um, um, Google and uh, let me sign in and uh, training right that um, over here I have in my G drive in my Google Drive um, you see that there is a lot of stuff in here but in the advanced QTP here is the software is the software so uh, you should be able to get the software from here uh, this is uh, 11 I will upload 11.5 uh, this is the older version of it I'll upload the 11.5 and then you can get it from here you can download from here right okay now uh, a couple other things uh, we have here uh, class timings were told 2 to 4 it is hard for me between 4 and 6 can we let me know whether you could have the class between two to four. Uh, um, we will see. I have uh, I have a class that I teach uh, in the morning, and uh, that's a mobile testing class. Um, so um, you know, um, I have to finish that, and once I finish that, uh, then uh, you know, you guys can uh, my whole day would be free, and then I can. Um, go ahead and give you any time but uh, just for one more week uh, if we keep it the same timings for one more week and after that the um, uh, last four classes I promise you I'll change the time um, so one more week we keep it uh, meaning the next two classes we'll keep the same time and after that we'll change it uh, um, now uh, how do you get access to the software I will I have to give you uh, I have to give you access to it so after I finish this session today, in the next 15-20 uh, minutes, I'll make sure that whoever uh, is a paid member should get the access to the to the uh, videos as well as to the content here. Okay, um, anything else uh, you guys need to discuss? Uh, if not, uh, the assignment for day one, prepare the environment and do the GUI testing. Assignment for day two, uh, do the complete uh, you know uh, API testing like what we did today. Um, I have to give you the visuals. Um, I will be giving you the visual. I'll be posting it in the uh, you know G Drive, Google Drive. All right. Okay. Uh, can I attend recorded video next week if I miss the class? Uh, no problem. Yeah, you can always uh, get the videos. The videos will be there for you to watch after an hour to hour and a half of every session. You can go back and then watch the videos. They will be there. All right, like yesterday's uh, is there. This video will be there like in an hour's time. All right. Um, in mobile testing course, you included UFT also. Um, yes and no, because of the fact that uh, you know it's a license based, and uh, so we have to have uh, um, the license to access it. Uh, you know, so I'm talking to them. Um, you know, Perfecto Mobile guys. I'm talking to them to give me some uh, uh, free trial version of it. But even the trial version, they don't give it out to uh, somebody who doesn't have a licensed copy of uh, UFT. So unless you have a licensed copy of UFT, they don't want uh, Perfecto Mobile guys. They don't want to give uh, access um, to the cloud. And we cannot do anything unless and until we have uh, the license. So I'm talking to them, and let's see if they agree to it. Uh, then uh, you know, I'm, because I'm doing their work, I'm training, you know, for their tour. So hopefully they should agree to it. If not, uh, then you know, uh, tough luck, I guess. Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, no more questions. So any other questions? Uh, because um, I was. Uh, told uh, that uh, I don't give time to you guys to ask questions so um, that part yes because during during the session uh, we are so involved that we we are not able to like uh, you know um, focus on uh, taking questions and meanwhile I mean I try my best to you know pause myself and then answer your questions uh, 
during the session as well. But uh, I have decided that at the end of the session, I'm going to give you enough time if you have any questions. So uh, let them come if you have uh, any questions. Recorded videos, uh, uh, you all should get it because the course just started yesterday. Um, you know, we did not do it yet. So today, I have all the registration settling down today. So we know how many candidates and all that. So you will start to get uh, the videos today. Um, so you will get an email in about an hour uh, time that you have the access to the videos. All right. Okay. Um, so no other questions. So that's it. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, and I will see you next week again. Same place, same time. Um, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. is what we'll be doing for at least for next week. And after that, uh, we'll see if we need to change the time. All right. All right, guys. Um, have a good uh, week ahead. Enjoy the rest of uh, the Sunday. Thank you.